Hello everyone, myself Jalaj Nathpal and I welcome you all to Adota. So in today's lecture of Phenonomics series, we are going to cover part 3 of the financial market. And mind you, we have covered variety of topics under part 1 as well as in part 2 as well. So I request you to watch all these particular videos because these particular videos will definitely help you to gain, this, to gain extra marks plus you will also build a good conceptual clarity in your coming exams as well. So before moving ahead, I would like you to subscribe to our YouTube as well as to our Telegram channel and the link of the same is given in the description box below. So if we see the relevance of the financial market, we will have to understand the previous year questions as well. If you see, in 2019, RBI has asked a special question regarding preference share and this particular question has been asked in phase 2. So this question carries two crucial important marks. And mind you, this particular question is very easy. It can be done in less than two seconds because uh, if the student has a good conceptual clarity, then this particular question is like a cakewalk for all of them. And this is what this particular question was asked in phase two, which is considered as the toughest part of RBA grade B is gap. So let's move ahead and you will be able to answer this question if you watch this particular video to the full length. So let's start. And again, I have already told you that in all these panel, all in the previous year starting from 2018 to 2022, even in the present year, if you see, SEBI has asked concept related questions regarding preference shares in the phase one as well as in the recently held phase two as well. So all these uh, uh, financial market is like very important chapter and you cannot leave this particular chapter at all. So let's start and before moving ahead i want you to revise because revision is really very important if you want to ace and exam see all these particular concepts we have covered in our previous videos as well so i request you to please watch part one and part two all these variety of topics have been covered up and this particular slide will help you in revision so let's move to our next slide so in today's topic let's see what we are going to study if we see this particular part has been already taken care of. We have already seen what is fresh issue and what is OFS. We have already decoded the uh, PDM IPO. So all these particular concepts are covered. In today's topic, we are seeing to we are going to cover preferential issue as well as private placement. And these two particular topics are really very easy. Just a normal reading is enough, and uh, you will be able to answer all the questions. So if we start with the definition of preferential issue, then we will be going to deep into the you know different types as well as we will see the features of preferential issue. So in preferential issue, the stocks are issued to the parties which have given some preference over other shareholders. See, these are the three key terms over this particular definition. So when we see stock are issued to certain parties, what are these parties? So these parties are generally the are the investors who are sitting in the stock market now which are given some preference we will decode what are the different types of preference which have been given over pre some preferences over other shareholders see other shareholders here means equity shareholders because if you see in the company there are mainly two types of shareholder only equity shareholders as well as the preference shareholders so you give some preference over equity shareholders so please mind that what are these two particular preferences so now let's try to decode that what are these preferences. So when it comes to the preference, the preference can be given in two types. The first is dividend. Under preference share, we pay dividend first. We have to remember this particular concept that preference is given to the preference shareholders in the terms of dividend. So what I want to say by this, let's understand by this with an example. If let's say company XYZ Limited issues dividend, I am not saying any other conceptual clarity word. I am saying just dividend. So the first dividend will be paid to preference shareholders. And then after deducting the dividend of the preference shareholder, then the amount, whatever amount is left, then they, it will be paid to equity shareholders. So I hope this particular concept is really very easy and you can easily understand that preference is given in the terms of dividend. Uh, to preference shareholders. Now let's come to the capital repayment. See, when a company is going under liquidation, then you will have to understand that preference shareholders will be paid their capital before equity shareholders. See, when the company is going under, let's say, they are closing their business and they are running out of the market. So first, they will be paying their creditors. And these creditors can be debenture holders' debt or the different debt which they have taken from any other financial institution. 
then they will be paying their capital to preference shareholders and then they will be paying their capital to equity shareholders so i hope the order of repayment is very much clear to you and why the word preference is there is also clear to you the word preference is given in the terms of dividend and the other is given in the terms of capital repayment so this particular concept and this particular definition is truly decoded for you now my million dollar question to you is that is preference share same as debt capital the answer to this particular question is completely no see when it comes to the preference share you will have to understand that they are the owners of the company whereas those who are having debt capital they are the creditors of the company you will also have to note this particular point under preference share we pay dividend but under debt we pay interest so these two are the most important differences between debt as well as in preference share so now let's move ahead and let's see the features of preference shares these are very general features if you are able to understand that the, uh, the word preference over there see the preference is given in claims in dividend as well as in capital repayment this point we have already in covered now let's see dividends are fixed see as i've already told you that uh, preference is given to the preference shareholder but they are given a fixed line of dividend for example they will be paid 18% or let's say 10% uh, 10% of the dividend for the period of the preference shares so this particular component makes preference share as same as debt but they are not completely the same i have already told you the differences between the two so there are fixed dividend but in equity there are fluctuating dividends no voting rights see under preference share you will not get any voting rights of the company even if you are having you know a huge amount of preference shares but then uh, you will be not be given any voting rights but there are some you know types of preference share which gives this particular you know uh, voting right power so we will deal about different types of preference share later but generally they are not paid any uh, they are not given any voting rights they have a passive role in the management as i've already told you with no voting rights preference share are also known as a passive owners of the company now let's discuss some types of preference shares see the first type is convertible and non convertible and see the word only tells the, uh, its meaning under convertible preference shares we see that this particular preference share can be converted into equity capital after a certain period of time so this particular word will tell you the meaning and under non convertible you will not have that option to convert your preference share into the equity capital second comes the redeemable and irredeemable see preference shares come with a particular period of time so after this particular period ends you will be having your capital back from the company so that's what the word redeemable means and i have specially put these two particular asterisk mark under the irredeemable see i will tell you why these particular marks have been put out in later part of the video now let's come to third part that is participating and non participating see under participating preference share you can still take a part in the extra profits of the company but under non participating you cannot take any part in the extra profits which the company makes this particular extra profit will be uh, reserved for the equity shareholders the fourth part that is cumulative and non cumulative preference share c if a company has not earned a profit in a particular year they can say no to the dividend to the preference shareholder but if that particular preference share is holding cumulative preference share then the company will have to pay back the dividend in those year as well where the profits of the company are zero so cumulative preference share in this preference share you will get the dividend in every year irrespective of the profits now let's decode this particular asterisk mark which i have already told you and this is a very less known fact that preference shares can be issued maximum a period up to 20 years now if you are having you know uh, let's say a company who is issuing preference share they can issue a preference share only up to a period of 20 years so that's why in india if you see irredeemable preference shares cannot be issued but still for theoretical knowledge they are given in your syllabus so let's understand what is irredeemable also irredeemable is something which you cannot redeem over the period of life it's like a perpetuity so as i have already told you irredeemable preference share according to companies act 2013 they cannot be issued in india now let's uh, this uh, this particular concept of preference share is over now let's cover now private placement see we have already covered about rights issue so rights issue and private placements are you know a little bit confusing 
<coughs> a private placement of security is an offer made by the company to a selected group of investors, financial institutions, banks and mutual funds. So this particular types of uh, issue, a company makes a direct issue to the selected individuals or I would say selected financial companies and this particular under private placement you will also have to remember this particular concept that in a financial year a maximum private placement can be done to 200 persons only so you will have to remember that what is the meaning of private placement a private placement means issuing of shares to a particular financial institution or you can say it as a bank or a mutual fund and this particular issue has to be less uh, has to be less than 200 people at in a financial year so this is a very small concept yet it becomes very confusing when you go to comparison with the right issue now th this is the previous year question uh, I would say this is a very easy or in fact very easy question which you can easily answer under 5 seconds now I will be seeing your answers and I will be commenting also if you are giving your correct answers in the comment box below now you will also have to answer these two particular questions as well because these are I will say moderate level and you will also have to read uh, or I would say watch part 1 and part 2 then only you will be able to answer these two particular questions so I hope I was able to explain what is the difference between preference as well as equity capital till then and meet you in the next lecture till then please keep preparing and all the best for the coming exams thank you and meet you in the next lecture